Hey everyone, what is going on? I installed iOS 12 Beta 2 on my iPhone 5S. We're going to take a super quick look at it as usual. Now with iOS 12 Beta 1, it's actually been super solid and I kind of did explain it on the 5S as well. Besides the small problems I have with my hardware of this phone, not the software, but the hardware, I'm actually kind of glad how iOS 12 is kind of being looked at and kind of being perceived. Apple kind of actually threw some positive notes to it on the keynote. They said like it's going to be like 60% times faster at opening the camera or something like, I don't remember, but basically improving the overall performance of it is basically the gist of what they were saying. And with beta two, they didn't really, you know, go super extreme with trying to, uh, you know, improve the performance or trying to add a bunch of features. They're mostly trying to fix what iOS 12 beta one was kind of messed up at. And I think that's how every iOS version should be. Like the first version should just bring a bunch of features and the betas after that fix it. With iOS 11, it seems like every single version, even the official versions that came out recently have just been a bunch of betas. So, but with this beta, there's not been too many features like I've stated. But there were some huge problems that apparently had some fixes. So on my daily driver, which is the 7 Plus, I was having these problems where I would get phone calls, but they would only show up on my Apple Watch and my MacBook, but they wouldn't show up on my phone itself. And it would say like on your iPhone um, that the phone would call was coming from. And the same thing with FaceTime audio and just FaceTime calls in general. So I was missing a lot of notifications from that and I'm not really too sure why. It was kind of a little problem. I'm not really too mad about it. I mean, I installed the beta, so I should expect that. But apparently with iOS 12 beta 2, it fixed it because I haven't had any problems with it yet. It would usually happen like once a day, but now from what I can tell, it hasn't happened yet. So at least that's a step in the right direction. Another problem that was going on was actually with maps and within the locations of it actually. When I was using a GPS to go somewhere, it was actually freaking out a lot and it wouldn't actually tell me my exact location. It would like show me like a location here, like down the street or something, and it would try to give directions from there. So it was super weird. I actually had to go to a city down about an hour or two away from me and I couldn't go to it because the GPS was messing up. So Apparently they fixed it, so I'm glad that that happened. I was really kind of upset about it, but I checked it on my other phone and it seems like it's fixed. I checked it out a couple times, closed it, opened it, so it seems good. I use Google Maps, but apparently people said it messed up on Apple Maps too, so. Now apparently screen time also got updated a little bit. So on my other phone, whenever I went to go to the screen time here, it actually wouldn't show, so it'd actually be messed up a little bit. But now when you go into screen time for the first time, it actually kind of tells you, okay, continue here, turn on screen time. And then you get a little bit of uh, diagnostics and information here here. It's a little slow on my device, but when you click here, as you use your phone, more stuff will come. And I literally just updated this phone and then I didn't even use it. So that's probably why it's messing up or not showing me that much stuff that I used. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm glad. Like I said in the other video, I'm going to be using this a lot. I think it's super important to see some more, you know, data and information of what's going on with your phone, how much you're using it, this and that. So I'm super glad that's the case and they kind of fixed it a little bit. It wasn't really broken. It's just the widget here wasn't working for me. And when I went to screen time, it was kind of throwing me off a little bit. So kind of glad that that happened. Now I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit, but I ran a benchmark and I was 12 beta one at a multi-core score of 48,998. And I just re-ran it and surprisingly it actually went up 66,997. So on my 5S, the performance should have increased quite a bit. And I'm pretty surprised. I'm going to do a comparisons tomorrow versus iOS 12 beta 1 versus iOS 12 beta 2 and kind of see a little bit more game, uh, comparisons between opening apps and powering off the phone and turning it on. So, but with my multi-core score, I can tell you that it has definitely gone up in speed. Do I notice it when I'm scrolling through? Maybe a little bit, but I'm actually pretty glad I went up in speed. So we can kind of see those performance improvements that iOS 12 is supposed to bring. So should you go out and install iOS 12 beta 2 on your daily driver? Absolutely not. Even if the iPhone 5S is your daily driver, you should stick with iOS 11.4 or whatever new version of iOS is going to be released next week. Never install a beta on your phone. You're just asking for problems. And guys, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button. That'll mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. We're still doing the iPhone SE and iPhone 6S giveaway. In order to enter, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram and you're already entered. Links to everything will be down in the description as well as a video explaining more about the giveaway, a little bit more details about it. So if you guys wanna check that out, everything's in the description. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.